Hi, welcome to the short video on the fundamental concepts for understanding security in ClickView. My name is John Callan. I'm with the product marketing team at ClickTech. In order to better understand how security is implemented in ClickView, it's important to understand the role of the major product components and how they fit into a typical implementation architecture. The three major product components are the developer, server, and publisher. Let's discuss each in turn. ClickView Developer is the tool that developers and analysts use to create with. They create data extraction and transformation models here, as well as the interactive presentation layer or graphical user interface that ultimately becomes the end user's window into ClickView. This product is used either on a Windows desktop or server and the file type that is ultimately created is called a QVW file. ClickView server is actually an amalgamation of the server product and the ClickView web server and also includes the management console as well as Access Point, the main browser-based user portal for accessing ClickView applications. The server contains an in-memory analytics engine handles all ClickView client-server communication procedures and provides for client authorization against directory providers. The ClickView Publisher is another server-side product that works in close conjunction with the ClickView server to perform two main functions. One, loading data directly from underlying data sources and two, acts as a distribution service to both reduce data within the source application and distribute the resultant reduced documents. Management of the Publisher is also done through the Management Console. Okay, so let's take a closer look at how these products all fit together in a typical enterprise deployment. As you can see, the server product typically sits in what is known as the front end of a deployment. This is the area where end users interact with documents and data that they are authorized to see. The file types seen on the front end are QVW and, where applicable, .meta files. All communication between the end user client and server occurs here and is handled either via HTTP or the ClickView proprietary QVP protocol. The developer and publisher products both reside in what is known as the back end of a deployment. That is, a very restricted area protected by a firewall where access is limited to application developers and administrators. It is here where source documents are created using developer. The source documents contain connection strings to data sources and data transformation actions. The source documents can either be QVW or QVD files. QVD files are binary data only files with no UI that can be created when a QVW is reloaded. They are an optimal data storage solution for ClickView deployments. The back end is the only part of a deployment that communicates directly with the source data from enterprise data sources. When these core ClickView products are combined in this way, a pretty typical deployment scenario emerges. Of course, other deployment scenarios are possible, for example, including adding a further tier containing just the web server. Let's take a look at how ClickView handles issues such as user authentication and authorization. These are handled in much greater depth in further videos in this series, so I'll keep it pretty conceptual here. Authentication answers the question of who you are and how do you prove it. In ClickView, the authentication of a user is almost always done against an external entity, and a type of single sign-on is used to pass the externally authenticated user identity to the ClickView server. On the front end, clients will authenticate via a directory catalog. That may or may not be part of a single sign-on solution. Once authenticated, all communication is secured by HTTPS or the ClickView QVP protocol. On the back end, the publisher will interact with a directory catalog to authenticate the service's users before running reloads, reductions, and or distribution tasks. ClickView can work with a variety of authentication protocols, the most common of which is integrated Windows authentication, but also supports HTTP headers and ticketing. In less common instances, a ClickView custom directory can be utilized, where ClickView can be used to provide authentication using a control list set up within the ClickView server. Authorization answers the questions of, once you have been authenticated, what data are you allowed to see and what are you allowed to do? There are two topics I'd like to cover here. First is file or document security. There are two options for controlling document access privileges in ClickView. The first is using NTFS mode. This is where the Windows OS controls access. The second is called DMS, where ClickView controls access. DMS stands for Document Metadata Services and is a ClickView proprietary feature controlled via the Enterprise Management Console on the ClickView server. The second topic is data level security. ClickView handles this in one of two ways, or a combination of both. The first is called Section Access, and this is implemented at the file level. That is, once you have been granted access to a particular document, what data within that document are you allowed access to? Using Section Access, row and field level security can be implemented. It's implemented at the ClickView file level by an administrator using something called a hidden script. More on that in this video series later. 
A second method for data security is using the publisher to reduce the data. Basically, a source file is broken up into smaller files, each containing a subset of data of the source file. These files can then be accessed only by people who have authorization to view them. This is also a very secure method because the new reduced documents have no interaction at all with the original source databases. So how do these concepts work in practice? Well, let's take a look at a section access example. Here we have a user who is using one of the supported clients, Ajax, desktop, mobile, etc. They are trying to open a document called sales.qvw. This file contains the entire sales data for the user's company. When he tries to open the file, he's asked to authenticate himself. This either occurs by authenticating against a directory catalog like AD, or against a table in the file itself, or located on the server. There are two user types, admin and user. If the person is authenticated as an admin, then they get to see all of the data in the file. If the user is authenticated as a user type, then it will depend on what authorization level they have, as determined by the section access script within the file, as to what data they will see. So, user A gets to see a certain section of the data, user B a different section, and user C yet another different section. Let's take a look at publisher reductions. Again, publisher sits on the back end of a deployment and is responsible for taking source data and reducing it and distributing it. Let's start with ClickView Developer. It's used to create the sales.qvw file, which again contains the entire sales data from the user's company. This file is placed in the source documents directory on the publisher, and a task is created to reload the data from the company's various source databases and other data sources. The reload script is contained within the sales.qvw file. The task simply initiates the reload. The task also reduces the file into six smaller files based on country sales data. The final role of the task is to distribute it to a ClickView server. As you can now see, this neatly represents the front-end, back-end architecture as previously discussed. From here, the newly created files are made available through Access Point, from which authorized users can access the file or files that they have access privileges to via a variety of clients. The important point here is that none of the user documents contain data other than that which is relevant to that file. They do not contain any of the other source data. In this video series, I'll walk through how security in ClickView is applied through a combination of document level and server level approaches. Depending on the size and complexity of your implementation, some or all of the approaches covered in this series will be relevant to you. Thank you.